And if this is your first time finding me and Larry, please subscribe to my channel, subscribe to his. Both links are in the video description. And before we give our review, it's only fitting, and I mean it's only fitting, that we go to the most show-stopping event that happened on episode three. I gotta go there because these two women had the best weaves I've seen this side of the Mason-Dixon, and one of them laid the smack down on the other one. Take a look. Asked Tommy to help you again and to tell you where he hid the body just in case. Either way, it was your call. And then when James wouldn't come back to you, when he began a relationship with Ramona Garrity, when he was leaving you behind for Albany, he wasn't just abandoning you. He was leaving behind your criminal enterprise, your family. Mm. <laughs> Boy, did Tamika open a can of whoop ass on Tasha? Did you see? Did did you see the look on Davis McLean's face when she mentioned Ramona Garrity, which got me thinking they might go looking for Ramona at this point, Larry. I and, keep telling you guys, I don't know golly, why you keep on wanting this it. Ramona like she's never coming back. Ramona, Ramona is like she's like a uh like a fine wine that everybody wants a sip of. Once you've had a little taste of it, you keep seeking it out. And then eventually you go find it again. You bring it back. That's just oh, what it is. My, oh, my Lord. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the one of the finest moments of episode <laughs> three. Tamika knows all the business. She knows all Cooper Sacks business. And when she came in there and laid the smack down on Tasha, she dug that knife so far down her throat, you could see sharp edges coming out of her butthole. She laid the smack down on Tasha. She talked about jealousy with Aunt, with Angela. She talked about him, I mean, Ghost killing her lover. She brought up Ramona and Ghost moving on. She brought up the fact that Tasha lost her daughter and mm. James was still in love with Aunt. Man, she twisted that knife. Deep, she really did. Larry, really speak did. on speak on the look on Davis McClain's face said it all. I mean, he that look on his face said it all. But Larry, talk about that moment. Well, I'll tell you the first thing that really got me was that they had pulled out a whole court a courthouse glam squad for her. I mean, she rolled up in there, they opened that door. They had a makeup artist, a hairstylist, a wardrobe person over there. I mean, they had in a complete glam squad. I was I was surprised that that the queer eye wasn't gonna show up in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he said that. I didn't say that. I didn't I'm say just that. Saying, they had they had the whole team in there for. They had, I mean. It's amazing how you could take somebody that goes they they go from straight looking prison gangster to to like respectable you know arm candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I didn't do the whole entire speech but that was a part where Tamika said Tamika said you use all that wash drug money to supply your clothes and your hair nice wig by the way. I, I like to fell out. <laughs> Bro, I like to fell out. I was like, I was already telling Chris, I was like, damn, they snatched Tasha edges quick and gave her a hot weave. And Tamika came, Tamika came right on in there, filled it in. But hey, we know Tamika rocking the same wig too, but they don't. Those are dope wigs. Right. Man. Yeah. Bro, that, that was the show stopping moment for me. I wanted Tamika to take the job with Davis McClain, but you can cool guarantee we haven't seen the last of her yet. Mm -mm. Oh, no, not even close. I would not be at all surprised if um, if she ends up working with them. Now, I don't know how that would work out because there has to be some sort of conflict when they used to work together and then you have one representing the other of some sort or some, I don't know, whatever. The whole relationship seems way too incestual for for the courts to allow it, but the courts will allow so much shenanigans. I just don't know, but you know, we'll see that. But what's his name? He did a really good job of, of showing Tasha why she should not be on the stand. Mm -mm. I mean, because mm -hmm. she would get torn apart, literally. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, everything that Tamika knows, Cooper Sachs knows too. Yeah, 
Cooper Sacks knows everything Tamika knows, and he can really get up there and shove that wedge in Tasha too. So at this point in time, it's just a matter of will Tamika join the team? And if she does, she's not going to be able to say anything about Cooper Sacks. As a matter of fact, Cooper Sacks might have her recuse herself from being on that team when he tells the judge there's a conflict of interest. Right. You know, that would be a way for Cooper Sacks to weasel out of having Tamika have any part in the court dealings dealing with Tasha. And so part at this point, he doesn't think that'll be the case. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Like, I, I get what you're saying. I don't mean to cut you off. I, I was just saying, I don't think that may be the case only because I think that if he goes and tells the judge that there's a conflict of interest and they shouldn't have her on that team, hmm. I'm thinking that I'm thinking the fit, the defense might tell the judge there's a conflict of interest and, and Sachs shouldn't be on that team. Okay. Like if the government's going to bring this case, he shouldn't be on that team because of all the conflicts they have. That's and, true. That's true. you know, so it might be a double-edged sword for him to bring that up. It might be just best for him if he wants to prosecute the case to just shut up and let whoever is going to be on the team be on the team and, and so, just present his case. And so, so I guess at that point in time, Larry, it's going to come down to who hates who the most. You've got Blanca Rodriguez, who doesn't really care for Tasha, but she hates Cooper Sacks. Yeah. You got Tamika, who I don't think she hates Tasha, but she hates Cooper Sacks. If we, if they, thing, I think, if they I think were to bring Sachs in, really wanted, I think Sacks really wanted Ghost. I think he really wanted Ghost and was willing to go out there on a limb, as we saw. He was really willing to to bend the law and break the law to get after him. I don't think he has that same level of passion towards Tasha. I think some of what he's feeling is lingering towards towards Ghost, but I don't think he has that same passion to get Tasha. And so I'm not sure that he's going to want her locked up more than she's going to want her freedom. No. Okay. And if there was the, if they was to bring your sweetie pie back into the picture, what is she going to do? So let's let's say they introduce Ramona Garrity. What is she going to do? Well, we're going to find out that Ramona is probably going to be an alumni of of uh, of what you call it that school that that Reek goes to, and so and so that professor, what's her name, Professor Megram, is going to ask her to come and speak to the class, and then that's when uh, that's when Reek and her are going to bump into each other, and then all of a sudden it's going to turn into this weird sort of tension that turns sexual and then as much as we don't want to see Tariq getting it in and we're going to end up seeing Tosh we're going to end up seeing Tariq and Ramona get it in and it might be a threesome with her and uh and Megram <laughs> moving right along ladies and gentlemen moving right along hey man Lord, you asked boy, you man. asked I did <laughs> I, I don't know why I asked him anything dealing with Ramona. We know what kind of crazy answers we're going to get. Let's just go ahead and jump to the beginning of this whole thing. So we, we get to know a little bit more about Drew's character. Um, and this is just my opinion. But for him to be in the game that he's in, he seems a little bit timid and a little bit soft. Um, the daddy is in love with Drew taking the mantle and being the cartel leader. And he doesn't want Kane to do it because he feels like Kane is a hothead. And I can agree that Kane, Kane has the temperament of Tommy, that's for sure. But Drew, Larry, Drew, I don't Drew, know. Drew, I think it. I think Drew's gay. I, I'm I'm getting a lot of soft. I, the, the title and thumbnail of my video was Daddy, I'm soft. And I had an arrow pointing at Drew. Um yeah. I mean, when I was when there was there was that scene when they were all in the living room, and Mary came in and was speaking to him. It was because there, there were two scenes like that in this episode, and one of those ones when she came in and spoke to him, and he said something else to her. He either said something to her, or he said something to Kane. He just <clears throat> he sounded real, real moist, and I was like, I think I think dude's gay, and I think that's partly why his dad is saying. He's not built for this life. I think maybe that he thinks that the dude's gay. He's too soft. And he doesn't, even though we have him in this life, he's not really built for this life. And we need to, like, if you're going to have him do this, you either need to toughen him up 
or we need to remove him from the gangster side of it. And which isn't a bad idea. I mean, if you're going to have an organization that you want to flourish, it's not a bad idea to let one person run sort of the streets like it, like a cane and let the other person run the business side so that you can have a, you can have your money sort of insulated. So you have the business side that's clean and people are, are, are you know, maybe you have to, to clean the money up by running it through a nightclub like James was or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever other businesses that you have, you do that. And let the daughter go to school. She doesn't need her. I mean, what is she going to do? What are you, you going to turn her into a queen pin or something? You don't need her. You already have two kids. Let her do her thing. Yeah, I felt you know? like I, I said in my review video, like this is the complete opposite of Tariq and Ghost. You have Monet and Diana. You have a daughter that wants to go to college and play basketball. And the right. mom is not allowing her to do that because she wants her to stay in the streets. Whereas with Ghost, you had a son who wanted to be in the street. And Ghost wanted the dad to go to college and not had to do the stuff that daddy had to do. Right. And, and I find that to be an interesting dynamic where now you're about to have these two kids who had opposing viewpoints on the street life about to start dating, messing around. Right. Um, I still I feel be interesting. Go ahead. You know, it'd be interesting if all of this stuff blows up and, um, you know, if all this stuff with with uh, with Tariq blows up and he ends up really start starts hustling on campus and making a lot of money and he's working with Braden, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see if he ends up getting Braden. Like if if Tasha's case just sort of starts to go downward, it would be interesting to see if he has Braden's family who may have some connections since they have a ton of money and they're building wings onto schools and whatnot. It'd be interesting to find out if he gets his his buddy to pull some strings. Maybe his dad or his parents have some political connections to help get Tasha out of jail. Because it wouldn't seem like it would be that far fetched if they were if they're that rich that they're donors to you know political donors. And if they just simply say, "Hey, can you have the governor pardon my mom or or commute my mom's sentence or something like?" Well, I guess it would have to be a pardon because she's not even she's not even convicted yet. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see if that if that plays into it somehow, you know. Well, but to to help feed into your theory, we see old short man Tate is going to be in the next episode, and mm. it wouldn't be far fetched um theory to think that maybe somehow, some way, Tate does become governor during this season, and he gives Tasha a pardon because maybe she's got some extra dirt on him. Maybe mm. Ghost let Tariq or her know the dirty dealings that Tate had, and, or maybe Ramona knows about the dirty dealings that Tate has, and to put the squeeze on Tate, he got to release Tasha from jail. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That would be interesting to see how it goes. Man, I, I tell you, they they uh, they have left, if, if you don't think too hard about stuff, they do leave you guessing a bit. I don't want to think too hard about it. Cause I don't want to figure anything out and then I don't really enjoy watching it. So I'm enjoying, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm sort of, I'm sort of intrigued about what's going on with professor Megram and the other dude, because he obviously knew what he was doing and messing with professor Megram's head. Cause when he had that, that graduate student in there, he really didn't want to be with her at all. And then when he realized that what's her name walked into her office next door, he was like, okay, now I have a chance to mess with her. Now, if I, if I, if I show her that other women want me, maybe she'll she'll get a little jealous and whatever else. Not to mention that she's a sex addict. So if she hears sex going on, maybe she's going to get all worked up and she's going to be thinking about this. Oh, damn, I should probably go get one. If I don't get with him, somebody else is, you know, I, and, didn't, I didn't pick up on the part that he did that knowing that she was coming in. Um, oh, no, I think he definitely knew because he he was at first he was like. He was telling the girl, no, 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 really yeah. didn't want to. And then I felt like he heard those doors open. Mm-hmm. And then not only did he not only did he did he go ahead and, and stop her from leaving at that point and initiated, he pushed her up, up against their adjoining wall. It wasn't yeah. like he decided, OK, let's go do it on the desk or some other place. He pushed her up against that adjoining wall, knowing that he was going to bang up on that wall. So mm-hmm. I think he definitely knew and was definitely using that that graduate student to play you know, to, to play uh, Professor Megram, so. That's, and that's a damn shame. You done had this graduate student of yours read the book, and did you catch the title of the book, 
title of his book is called Raw. I wonder what the details are of that book that he tells on Professor Meagrim. So the student done read the book, says that he's a romantic. He hears the footsteps of Professor Meagrim, then instead of being a romantic with the student, he throws her ass face first up against the wall and then persists to pound her while he, in your opinion, knows Professor Meagrim is listening. Yeah, She's been trying to avoid him the way that um, her sponsor has told her to do. And then she hears all that noise. And we was wondering, is she going to go in there and try to get in the mix or she's going to leave? And she left. So that says yeah. she's tempering her primal inner urges. Right. But we don't know where she went. For all we know, she got all worked up and decided to leave and ran into Tariq on the way out. I guess we'll find oh, out man. next week. No, no, I'm just no. saying, she, man. She, she did not run into Tariq because he might, maybe she ran into Zeke then. Whoo, that as, could be as, a mess. As much as they are setting it up that she has a thing for Tariq, they really are spinning these other women into Tariq's life. Like Lauren, you know, she's tr she's doing everything but coming out of her clothes, throwing the panty draws at Tariq. Diana, you're talking about the, the little, uh, you're talking about the little Spanish girl. Uh, Lauren, yeah, Lauren is the student, the student that's in his class. Right. And Diana, every time she gets a chance, she's telling Re the whole entire family business. Hell, they're going to have to shut her up <laughs> because <laughs> she's giving up way too much information to Tariq. And I don't see Tariq really feeling either one of these women as much as they're feeling him. What do you think, Larry? I think he's I think he likes what's her name um Diana but I don't really think he's like I mean I don't know the way he, the way I feel like with Lauren I feel like he's sort of like take it or leave it I don't think I think she's definitely like you said she's feeling him more than than he's feeling her she's sort of trying to play it cool like she's not feeling him but it's obvious it's obvious that she is and you know but you're right. The the you know Monet is gonna have to do something. But it was so. I mean, it was so. Um, it was just so obvious that Monet is is sort of afraid of Reek. You know, even when she went in there, she gave all this speech about no one who who's next to Tariq lives long. They either end up in jail, in jail or dead. And then what does she do? She goes over there, and ends up in business with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's just like. I mean, it took him all of about five minutes to outsmart her. Just, you know, she's basically like, stay away from this, stay away from that. And she, and then he's basically like, look. So she starts telling him all this stuff. And, he, and then so basically in the middle of the conversation, he just stops, checks her and says, oh, so Zeke is your priority. You know, it was just like, F all the BS you're talking about. Zeke is your priority. Okay, I got that. Now I know how to play you for real. So check this out. If I fail, he fails, and then you're out. So we're on the same team, and I want to get down with this, so you're going to be my new supplier. That's basically <laughs> – I mean, it took him about five minutes to get her in. I mean, maybe she was allowing it because she wanted to be in that position with him, but it didn't seem like she did. But it didn't take long for himself to maneuver in, you know, himself into her life and into her business. So I, did, I, I felt like, man, that wasn't the boss move on Monet's part. I really did. No. I mean, you 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 hardly know this boy. And within five minutes, the pressure that he has on you is getting Zeke through college was enough for you to let him into your drug business. I, I that, that didn't fly well with me because that was just too quick. That was just way too quick. I felt like. But I mean, hey, right. You, I mean, you got to make a story out of it. And I guess. The thing that Tariq can hold over her head is the fact that she really wants Zeke to get through college and get to the NBA. She really right. wants that bad. And now they're dangling Tariq over Tasha's head. In essence, she wants Tasha to keep Tariq in line. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at it like this. It is now, even though they're working together, it's going to come down to the Tejadas versus the St. Patrick. Patrick's. Right. Yeah. And Larry, who's going to win that fight? Oh, well, if it comes down to the two of them, we already know that we already know that Tariq's side is going to win. 
shows about them. But also, I just think Tariq is just is just smarter. And even though you have, you know, even though they have, they may have some killers on that side. I just don't think that. I think they are underestimating Tariq. I mean, the dude blasted a cop. I mean, that's just. That's some next level kind of nuts right there. People just don't go around killing cops. And not to say that Kane wouldn't do it because Kane was ready to blast that cop right there, you know, in the last episode. But I think they're, they keep underestimate, underestimating Tariq, and I think it's going to be to their detriment. So, but the thing that I found interesting was this, the writers setting up for Tariq and Diana to be able to finally be together because when, when Monet was like, we can do this, but it can't, it, it can't be anywhere near Zeke. You're going to have to move out. And he was like, cool, I already got a spot. And so they moved hit Tariq out with Braden, which left him the perfect opportunity for Diana to be able just to roll up on campus whenever she feels like it and go see Reek. And, you know, so I, I mean, we already see, I can see how this story is going to play out. He's going to end up getting with her. She's going to end up on campus messing with Tariq. And, uh, you know, and at some point while she's on campus seeing Tariq or maybe just she may not even be with him. She just may be up there getting ready to see him or just leaving. <clears throat> Zeke is going to see her and be like, what are you doing up here? And then he's going to probably go back and say something to, to Monet or or. Diana's gonna have to try and find some reason to get Zeke not to say something to Monet. So, but that that relationship's gonna happen soon, and then it's probably gonna get outed pretty quickly thereafter. So, okay, well, Who knows? we'll see. We'll pick up on that interesting plot as it unfolds. Um, Daddy Tejada still trying to run things from jail. Apparently, he's not gonna be getting out. How is somebody going to how is somebody going to clap him? Because if this is going to come down that Tariq is going to get rid of his his suppliers and become the connect, so to speak, how is he going to get rid of Daddy Tejada, who's in jail? Because Tariq Tariq ain't got that much reach as of now. So how do you envision? How do you you don't think he's going to have to get rid of him? He might just flip him. He might end up make him make him work for him. Okay, I mean um, that's. I mean, what are they? What is, what's the one thing they always say in the in the drug game? Not that I've been in it, but just I've seen enough movies. I've, I've watched it on TV. <laughs> but but they always say if you want to get to somebody else's supplier, what do you do? You move enough product that their that their supplier wants you to come to them directly. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. move enough product, their supplier, their their distributor wants to meet you. They want you to come in and see who's this person moving all this product. So. Tariq moves enough product, he's gonna bypass Tahada and them. So he's gonna the, bypass Monet and go straight to their connect. They he they might Tariq might end up being being the new distro. He might end up being, you know, having Tahada and them working for him. So is, is there any can you see any scenario where some of the other families that we've seen in the past on power come back in future seasons as Tariq takes the mantle of new ghosts? Like, could you see the Italians? Um, could you see the Jimenez? Could you see any of these old cartels coming back to state claim in the area where Tariq is about to state claim? Well, yeah, I can see I can see Tariq working directly with the cartels because, you know, if he has that connect, he gets to avoid all the other people that may be out there, you know. He can avoid the Tejadas and whoever else, but and he can go straight to the cartels, and that's one he's going to get the best price, and he gets a little bit more security when you don't have to deal with those extra layers of people. You know, we know that the cartels want to stay insulated from the law, so that's just one less layer that you have to worry about someone snitching. So right, and somebody in I, the comment section just mentioned maybe they could weave in two bit. To go and, and take out Daddy Tejada, he's still part of the Power Universe. Um, yeah, and I always thought last season it was going to be a um, a Tariq two bit team up. It never happened, but it still could happen. I don't think that. I don't think that. Um, I don't think they'll take out Tejada this season. I think he'll be around because he seems like one of those characters that they're going to sort of build up and build up until he ends up getting out of jail and then they'll have some more conflict because of the way they're setting it up right now 
there is some, I mean, he's pulling the strings from inside the prison, but he's also work, you know, he has Monet working, but he's still sort of controlling things. She wants to make, do things her way. And so I see that conflict with those two and, you know, what we can see brewing potentially between Tahada and, and, and Tariq. So I could very much see in that they build this up, build this up until eventually Tahada gets out of jail. And then you have a real conflict between him and Monet. And is she going to be willing to step back and play second fiddle to him once he's out of jail? And, and at that point they might find themselves almost in a full blown war. If you now have Tariq with it with like a full blown crew if he has all of his people working for him because he might have some street cats that he's going to work with. Like maybe, like you said, maybe he ends up hooking up with 2-Bit. Two 2-Bit two hits the streets and is and basically is his Tommy, you know? And then he has Braden on there, you know, that that's working, you know, the, the, the college scene and working maybe some of the, you know, depending on what his parents do, maybe he's working the Wall, the wall Street crew or something. So maybe he's like, you know, his, his – uh, what's the dude's name? Stanfield or – you know, or not stamp. That's the name of the university. What's the What's the other dude's name? The Stearns. dude that, that Ghost used to deal with. Stearns. Stern. Yeah, maybe he's like his Stern in some ways, where he's dealing with the other with that other world. So I don't know. I mean, I, I um, I'll be interested to see how this all plays out. But I don't think they're getting rid of Tahada anytime soon. I think. Oh no. no. I think he's gonna be around at least until next season. Okay. I think well, at least until next season. And then we'll see maybe what happens with it. Because I, I think they're going to eventually have to get him out of jail. Oh, yeah. He's he's coming out of jail. It's just a matter of how are they going to spend the story to get him up out of jail. But, I mean. I'll tell you what I could see. I, 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 get, a little I, could. Sweet, I get a little sweet vibe from Daddy Tejada just as much as I get a sweet vibe from Drew, too. Just saying. I think Drew, I think Drew is gay. I think that's I think that's a story that's going to come out. I think he's gay, and that's where they're going to go with that story. And, you know? and I think the daddy could be bi. You think the daddy's bi, huh? Could be, and maybe that's one reason why he's caking up for Drew so much because they have that connection, and the daddy sees it and knows it too. Huh? Interesting. Yeah, I didn't see that, but I'm not going to discount it. I'm not going to say it couldn't happen. I just didn't. I just didn't think about that. So, but it'll be, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But I think I definitely think Drew's gay. I think the sister is probably going to end up needing to go to school. The sister, the, the daughter, the daughter needs to go to go away and go to school. But I, I think the daughter is probably very smart in such a way that Mary J probably wants to control her and it'll get to a point where she can't <laughs> because she's just too smart. You Man, know, y'all be bugging in the comment section. Look, Patty Patty 718, they are just reserved. I don't see gay daddy is fine. 